What's up, Closer Nation? Right back at it again, you know, with the Whiteboard Wednesday hookup. And today, we're going to talk about the number one rule in sales. Do you know what that is? Like, if I ask you, like, what's the number one rule in sales, comment below in the video right now. Comment below and say what you think the number one rule in sales is. It's cool. I'll wait a minute. All right, all right. So I'm going to give you a second while you're doing that. Before we get into the lesson this week, right, I want to talk to you about this side hustle that can become a full-time hustle. They turn your hustle into the hustle muscle, right? So here's the thing. We've got this program called Funnel Closer. And if you're a good salesperson, right, if you're good at what it is that you sell, let's say that you're top 20% in your company and you're looking for a way to make a little bit of extra money on the side, maybe you make 100 grand a year right now and you want to go to $150,000 and you don't want to work any more hours and extra hours in the office, so you're looking for some kind of side hustle that you can get involved in that doesn't take a lot of your time, but it's good money. Well, here's the thing. Sales funnels are like the new dot-com boom. And when I say the new dot-com boom, if you remember in the 90s, like everybody was out there scooping up dot-com URLs, right? The URL is the domain name, you know, like the, the www.hardcorecloser.com. Like that's the URL. And that, like the, when the dot-com bubble happened, everybody was scooping up every URL that was out there, right? Like everybody had to have a website. Every business had to have a website. So it was like super important. Well, we're seeing that same boom go on with website version 2.0, which is known as a sales funnel. Now, the difference between a regular website and a sales funnel is that a regular website is like, hello, here is our beautiful business. And a sales funnel is like, come on in here, let me get your name and number, sit out the table, let's talk about what you're looking for, right? And so you would rather have a website that collects somebody's name, information, their name, uh, email address, and phone number, rather than a website that just advertises your business. Look, we are in the information collecting business, right? Because when you collect information, it converts into a lead, and leads convert into closing uh, sales, right? So that's how the whole process works. We're in the information collecting business. Matter of fact, I read an article in Barron's the other day, no, it was Motley Flu, uh, um, the Motley Fool the other day that said that data is the most uh, the most expensive resource on the planet outpacing oil. So data is more expensive and more necessary right now and more in demand on our planet than oil. And that's what you're doing. That's what a sales funnel does is it collects data. And so businesses know they need them. Most of them don't know how to get their hands on them or at least how to get their hands on a good one. And so there's this huge demand for these sales funnels out there. And the problem is all the people that make these sales funnels, they have no clue how to sell them, right? They can make the most beautiful websites on the planet, but they're not salespeople like you and I. They can't go out, they can't structure a deal, they can't shake hands, they can't make checks and break necks and all that shit, right? That's not what they're into. They're like little, you know, computer nerds with nice, soft, delicate hands that work behind computers designing websites. They need folks like you to go sell their websites to the marketplace. Here's the best part. You can make like $2,000 commission or more per sale. Listen, the average website, like a regular website, not a sales funnel, the average website cost $15,000 here in America. You can go out and sell a sales funnel for $2,500, a fraction of what it costs for a website that looks better than a, than a website. It collects the data, which is the most uh, expensive resource on the planet right now, and you can get it made for about 500 bucks where you can pocket $2,000. How many times do you think you could do that with your local dry cleaner, with your CrossFit place, with your local gym, with the businesses that you network and talk to on a daily basis? How many times do you think you could sell those people funnels? And think about the benefit of this. Everybody wins when it comes to funnels, right? The company's getting more business, which means they're, they're getting more leads, which means they're getting more business, which means they're helping more customers be happy, which means the customers are happier, which means it goes into the marketplace. It's just good karma all around. And it's way affordable. So listen, I put together a whole training program called Funnel Closer where it teaches salespeople like you with no tech skills, right? That don't, you don't have to learn code. We've got the people in place to already do that for you. Go over to FunnelCloser.com, sign up for the webinar, spend an hour on that webinar and watch where I walk you through detail after detail of how you can cash in on this boom right now. So go over to FunnelCloser.com. Okay, so let's talk about the number one rule in sales. So here's how I learned this. I've learned it the hard way. And you know, you ever have a lesson where you've learned it a bunch of times, but you couldn't ever put a phrase to it until somebody says it to you one day and it's like that magic light bulb inside your head goes off. Well, that's what happened to me. And so rule number one in sales affects all of us. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna divulge what it is. I'm gonna give that information to you in a minute. But here's the thing about this rule number one in sales. If you break it every single time, you'll be miserable in this business. Now, also, according to the rule, it's a matter of metrics, so it's different for every scenario. But if you break this rule, 
it will cause you to be miserable in sales. We've all seen the sales guy with the big old beer gut and he's bald on his head and he's just miserable and he's like 23 years old. <laughs> you know, he's just, he's worked on Wall Street making cold calls for the last four years of his life and he's just miserable, right? We know that, right? And the problem is if you, if you violate rule number one in sales, that's what happens. You have a miserable existence in sales. So I want you to like grab your tablet, grab your phone, grab some kind of notes, pen and papers, and write down what I'm about to tell you is the number one rule in sales. You ready for this? Um, now I've been waiting this whole time during the commercial and everything else for those of you to, to, to fill out in the comments what you think. But here's the real number one rule in sales. You ready for it? Ready? All right. It's don't sell to broke people. Period. Right? It doesn't have to be profound. I know you were like expecting something totally different, but number one rule in sales, is don't sell to broke people. Here's why. Broke people can't buy your shit. If they can't afford your shit, why would you even try to sell to them? Because what this does is it kills your morale. Right? You're out there thinking that you can't close the sale to save your life, but meanwhile, you're talking to people that couldn't buy your product if they had a line of credit. And it kills morale, it kills you, and it's a waste of time. So what you've got to do as a salesperson is you've got to get quick to qualify people. Right now, listen, you're going to break a few eggs and make an omelet. So some people are going to get upset when you turn them down. Some people are going to get upset when you don't want to give them the time of day or when you don't want to spend time for them. But that's just part of it. That's what broke people do. That's why they're broke. They get upset because shit doesn't go their way instead of going out of their way to fix the shit that made them upset. Now, here's what I do know. If you sell to broke people, you will have a miserable sales existence. Now, you got to understand this broke is a state of, of mind, but it's also uh, a metric that you have to set. So like you might be selling $10 widgets. So broke to you might literally be somebody with zero dollars in their bank account. I'm selling 30,000 to $50,000 programs over here. So someone that's broke to me is someone that makes less than 200 grand a year that I can't sell to them. They can't afford our stuff. So I don't sell to those people. And I'm not saying if you make 200 grand or less a year, you're broke. I'm just saying you got a broke is a metric, right? I can't go buy submarines. There's banks that want to do $110 million deals. I'm broke as shit compared to them. I, so broke is a metric that you set. But here's the deal. Most people spend all their time cold calling people that couldn't afford to buy their product if they wanted to. And then they just, they drive themselves crazy and they try to meet all these numbers and all these crazy quotas. When the best thing that you can do as a salesperson is to create a procedure that allows you to eliminate uh, it allows you to prejudge, pre-qualify, and eliminate the broke people from your prospect pipeline. Because broke people are just tire kickers. You know, when I sold cars for a little while, people would come in and we had this Laguna Seca Mustang. Man, it was like an $80,000 Mustang. It had like a race key. It was all fancy with a red stripe and stuff in the middle of it. And people would come in there and they would want to look at it and they would want to test drive it and everything else. Before we let them test drive it, we would sit them down and run their credit. And at that point, most people would say, oh, you know what? I don't want to run my credit, blah, blah, because they weren't serious about buying it because they were broke people. And we knew a broke person couldn't afford a Laguna Seca. Just like when I first started going to the Ferrari and the McLaren and the Lamborghini dealerships, they wouldn't let me test drive a car either until I let them fill out my credit profile. And now that I own one, when I pull up in a, in a McLaren, they don't give me any problems anymore if I want to test drive one of their cars. But prior to that, they have a process of elimination to make sure that I'm not wasting their time. When I did mortgages, when people came in, the first thing I did was I pulled their credit and got their, uh, their check stubs so that I could tell whether they were even qualified to buy a house. And cause I didn't want to waste all my time building a whole profile only to find out and have a conversation only to find out that they couldn't get it. So rule number one, it's don't sell to broke people. So you might be saying, okay, so where do I find people with money? Well, first of all, there's niche targeting and advertising. You can learn that by going to breakfreeacademy.com forward slash entourage. You can join us over in the entourage. We teach all about strategic targeting and how to find audiences and run sales funnels, much like the small business funnel I talked about earlier, and run sales funnels that capture leads so that you can have conversations with people that are qualified and that aren't broke. So I'll give you a, a story about my coaching business and how I came across this revelation. And I like to give the quote, don't sell the broke people to my brother, Kevin Nations. That was actually his, his revelation that he gave me that, uh, that caused me to level up and have this revelation. But prior to working with Kevin, now this is four or five years ago, prior to working with Kevin Nations, my pitch was for loan officers. And the pitch was, hey, it's Ryan Stuman. And if you're doing less than $2 million a month in mortgages, I'd like to help you make that first $2 million hump and beyond. Fill out this form. We'll do a free strategy session. And I'll outline how you can use social media to go beyond $2 million a month in mortgage production. Fill out the form. So it was a quick thing. Now, you might think, well, that's a hell of a sales pitch, right? You want to help somebody get to $2 million a month. However, the bar I set at $2 million may sound like a lot, but it's really about 
15 to $20,000 a month in income. So it's not, you know, it's not millions of dollars like it sounds like, okay? Second of all, uh, $2 million a month is the metric for someone to make 15 to $20,000 if they make 2 million. If they do 250,000, which is obviously less than 2 million, then they don't have, like they might make $20,000 in a year. You see, so that person would be broke. But my problem was, my call to action was if you earn less than 2 million, or if you, if you produce less than 2 million, a month fill out the form so the people that are producing at two million were few and far between most of the people were the people that were doing two hundred fifty thousand that were living on fifty sixty thousand dollars a year they couldn't afford my product even if i wanted it and i found myself just going through this miserable existence having sales call after sales call with people that wanted my shit but just didn't have fifteen hundred dollars a month extra to invest and they had maxed out their credit cards and all these other like sob stories right was because I was selling to broke people. And so I go to Kevin Nations as a mentor and I say, man, I've got all these leads. I got all these things going on. What's going on? He looks at my pipeline and he says, you got to quit selling to broke people. That's the number one rule in sales. I thought, okay. He said, it's your offer. So I went and I created a new offer and I came back and I said, if you're making $2 million or if you're producing $2 million to $5 million a month in mortgages and you want to go to the $10 million mark, I'm the guy that can help you do that through social media and strategically making relationships with real estate agents. If you're already closing at least $2 million a month, I want to talk to you, fill out the form below. So what that did was that made that set the broke bar at 15 to $20,000 a month or above. You see, and at this point, my lead flow went way down. All of a sudden, I didn't have 20 leads coming in a day. I had five. But before, I had those 20 leads coming in, and I had to find those five people by talking to all 20. But now, I just had those five people show up, and I got to have a real conversation, and I started building my business accordingly. Now, the reason why I share that story with you, because that's something that really happened to me that changed from selling to broke people to selling to people that were qualified prospects. And it was simply the way that I tweaked my offer. So sometimes you might be the greatest salesperson in the world. You might have the gift of gab, the handshake of the Hulk. You might have all that good stuff going for you. You look like Ari Gold, Jeremy Piven in the prime, right? But here's the thing. If you're continuing to sell to people that can't afford your product, that can't buy your product, that are disinterested in it, you're never going to live your full potential. You're never going to get that Ferrari. You're never going to get the Lamborghini, the house in the hill, the pink poodles on the diamond board, Learjet in the runway, SLs in the driveway, and all that stuff that you've dreamed of your entire life, you've got to start selling to the right qualified prospects. So the action steps that you can take right now are to start creating a process of elimination to kick the kangaroos out, right? Kangaroos are people that, you know, they put a bunch of free shit in their pouch in the front, but their hands are too short to reach the back pocket where their wallet is, so they never really buy shit, right? You gotta create a process of elimination for those people to where you can find out if they're credit qualified quick and move on down the thing so that you can only sell to people who are qualified and have money to actually buy your product should they be interested. So remember this, ladies and gentlemen, rule number one in sales, don't sell to broke people. Make sure you share this with somebody who needs to know it on social media and everything else and tune in here every single week on YouTube and on hardcorecloser.com for Whiteboard Wednesday. Later.